that's on Coleman porcelain. And that will go to 10. It's a 10 2 6. Um, the recipe that was in, in the uh, John Britt's book, I added 20% alumina um, so that because it was really runny and I hated how runny it was. Mm -hmm. And so I added the alumina, but it, you know, it'll still go to. So, and again, that's kind of weird the way I do that. You know, I, I turn my hand backwards and mm -hmm. push. And a lot of people try those at the workshops and, and they seem to really like it. So I'm going to go out into a bulbous pot. So I'm going to do start blowing it out. I'm going to not go as far on the bottom as I can to begin with, and then I'll fill that in right at the end. Why is that? Well, because what most people have a tendency to do is push too far to begin with, and it, and then it collapses. Yeah. So, you know, and what Randy and I talk about is throwing in thirds. So we're gonna, as we break this pot down, we have the bottom third, the middle third, and the top third. So what I've got is, I wanna push the middle third out I want to keep, I keep this taller piece kind of standing straight up. It's a little bit thicker so that I can lay it in. Mm -hmm. And then this I'll fill in right at the end. And going up and down? I'm going up and down. Now the big thing when you do a real bulbous pot, from the middle point up, you have to make sure that you don't only push out, you have to pull up. Mm -hmm. Because if you just push out, it's going to sit down. You know, and, and we get pretty dry too. Though. Yeah, you know, I haven't put, I haven't put any moisture on it. If I wanted to put any moisture on it at all, you know, all I would do is is maybe do that, oh. and then wipe it off. Wow. And you can see, I don't know if y'all can see it from right. back there, but it's got a texture on yeah, it because yeah. right. it's, it's already starting to stretch. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, throwing super thin, I learned to throw from the cheap guy. Um, and he, he taught me to throw things paper thin. And I went off to graduate school, and the guy that I learned uh, under in graduate school was apprentice for the leeches in England. <clears throat> and so he threw thick. And um, he, he asked me one day, he said, why do you throw so thin? So I gave him all these things, you know, well, it's, you know, I save on clay, I do shows and it's easier to carry in. And he says, do you ever use your work? And I said, no, I sell it, you know, <laughs> I don't have time to use it. And he said, well, he kind of grinned and he said, you know, if you get a chance, one of the time use one of your pots and, and see what you think. And so I went home and I made a cake and uh, every time that spoon hit the side of that bowl, it sounded like it was gonna shatter. It felt like it was gonna shatter. And I was like, oh, I get it. And uh, so I started throwing a little thicker. And Randy and I both used to throw extremely thin. We both probably throw thicker now than we used to. Um, and part of it is because with the copper mats, you can't use an ex like a paper thin wall because it doesn't retain the heat like it, it would. So I can't, if I throw a super thin pot, I can't set my timing on the copper mats off of that. And um, <clears throat> that came through a lot of practice and a lot of, you know, a lot of different firings to figure that out. So, so, this, so now I'm gonna neck the, the top end. And so I leave it up, that mm. neck, just a little bit mm -hmm. because it gives strength to the bottom. Mm. And then, if I want to close off the top, then I'll lay that in, and then I'll start necking it in. It is, it's about yay thick now, right, right. up here. It's a, it's a lot thinner than that through here. So you work from the bottom up? I work from the bottom up, but, you know, they were noticing I do work from the top down. Um, and that's all just a feel thing. Uh -huh. But normally, as I'm expanding, I want to go from the bottom up. Even if you start water at all. No water at all. Even with my fingers, if you'll notice, I'm not, I'm not going back in. And you know, Randy is the first person that that showed me to throw that dry. Um, my master's thesis was on the copper mats, and it was actually on how not to do the copper mats. 
because I fired 110, I got 10 to turn out. And um, the guy that I learned under graduate school, his name was Elmer Taylor. And Elmer died last, the last June. Um, Elmer was, you know, you've heard me say that Randy was the biggest asshole I ever met. <laughs> Elmer. Uh, El Elmer was a trip. If you've never heard stories of Elmer, Elmer kept a axe handle on his, as he came in the door. And the axe handle was given to him by George Wallace. And Elmer's critiques were, you lined up your pots all around the room, oh, no. and he walked down the, the room and smashed them. And, well, he might keep two, you know. And, and he'd say, those are worth talking about. Oh, and he said everything else was crap. And uh, he had a thing called a ladder critique. The ladder critique, you came in, if your pot was the best pot, it was on the bottom rung of the ladder. If it was number it was six foot ladder, if it was on the six, it was the six best pot. Every pot after that, if you say, well, that's number three. Well, so you'd knock the top one off. Oh, and, and and break it and, and then you'd move the two up and, and that pot would go in number three. So you knew if there were 30 people in there, each of them with six pots, there were going to be a hundred and, and some of you I say 180 pots, there were going to be 174 pots broken on the floor. Oh there are going to be six left at the end of the day. Is that what you're going to do today with yeah. ours? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it one time. I told my students, I said, we're going to do that because I told them. That, and they were so funny. I got a four-foot ladder, so only four were going to be left. And, and I told them, so you can bring a bad pot and replace it for the pot that you're going to, because I wanted to bring their best pots, and you can replace it. I still had women cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, said, I told you to bring a bad one. I'm starting to sob you know, right now. <laughs> and, yeah, it was fun. His best critique he ever had was the, uh, so he had a, a show for the graduate students, and he said, so the class is, you can make, you're making a pot to send to a workshop in New York City. He said, one piece the entire semester. We're going to meet on the loading dock at 5 o'clock. It's going to be crated, ready to ship to New York. So 5.30, Elmer still hadn't shown up. Everybody's sitting there with their piece that they spent, you know, three months working on. And Elmer walks in about 5.30, and, he walk, and the door creaks open. He walks over to the first pot, box, and he looks at it. And he kind of looked, and he throws it oh, as far as he can throw it off the four-foot loading dock. And then the next one he picked up, and he 